Well, hey fam, it's the Southern Girl Shantae LeVette, and on today's video, I'm going to be talking about five design tips that are no cost or low cost for better living. Mm hmm. So let's jump right on into today's video. Tip number one guys, in 2021, we need to rearrange our furniture. If you have not moved your furniture in the last 5, 10, 15, 20 years, it might be time for a change. I put this one as a no-cost option for better living. And I know a lot of people will say, hey, I can't move my furniture a different way. More than likely, there is another option that you can rearrange your furniture. And I know some people may say my furniture is too big or too heavy. If that is you, then you will fall under low cost because you can invest into furniture sliders to help rearrange your furniture. If you feel like there is no option but the option that you have, we can always change a chair out. We can change out some end tables, side tables. We can change out our artwork. We can change out decor pieces. There are many things that you can do. You can put up drapes. You can take down drapes. So design tip number one, we need to rearrange our furniture. Design tip number two, y'all, we need to coordinate our light bulbs. You might be saying, coordinate my light bulbs. Yes. We need to coordinate our light bulbs. I put this design tip under a low cost option. So let's talk about lighting and design. When you think about light bulbs, you need to think about light bulbs in two different terms. One is the wattage or lumens. That's how bright your light bulb will be. Or Kelvin, which is the temperature of your light bulb. And that's why I know a lot of people run into problems. When you're designing a space for lighting, you have three different aspects of lighting. You have ambient lighting, you have task lighting, and you have accent lighting. But I'll talk about how you can design with lighting in a later video. Right now, we all just need to have coordinating light bulbs. Allow me to explain what having matching light bulbs mean in your home. So, over here, we got fluorescent light. Back here, we have an incandescent light bulb. Over here, we have the LED light bulb. And in our overhead light, heck, we don't even know what that is. Not to mention the lamps that we got where the bulb has blown out and we've never replaced it. So this is how a house feels when you don't have matching light bulbs. The fluorescent makes you feel like you are working in a cubicle at the office. The incandescent makes it feel like you're going to a nightclub. The LED makes you feel like you're shopping at a big box store. And the light that's overhead makes you feel like you're in a police station about to be interrogated. All in the same space. So. If your light bulbs are multiple choice in your house, we need to get an action plan going. It does make a difference in your space and how your space feels. Now I know we got the Edison light bulb if you are wanting to set a particular mood. But in general, if you have multiple choice light bulbs or no light bulbs at all, maybe nobody ever told you that. It's time that we get all of this together. So my third design tip that is a no cost or low cost option for better living is, y'all we gotta purge. Oh my goodness, we got a purge. We had a purge in 2021. And I would say here in America, we tend to have a lot of stuff. I have just gone through purging my closet. I took place in a six week one room challenge where you had to select a room that you wanted to make over in your house. I selected my closet because my closet was giving me the blues, y'all. It, it was just giving me the blues. Every time I tried to get something, stuff was falling. I couldn't even get into my closet. I couldn't even see the floor. One, my closet is very small, and where I used to live, my closet was bigger. I downsized in my closet, but I never downsized in the items that I had. Taking part in this challenge allowed me to really purge down things that I really love and just got rid of things that was just holding a spot. And now that I have purged, I've gone from this, yeah, I'm going to put a picture right here, to this. Ah, yes. Now, I know you're probably saying, man, I don't want to get rid of my stuff. Trust me, it was a lot of things. I was trying to make an excuse to keep some of these things when I know they can go on and better serve someone else. And it can be clothes. It could be furniture. So let me tell you how my family does. Before we get rid of an item, we poll one another. Say, hey, I have some slipper chairs or I have this. Can you use them? Before we just throw stuff away. Because we don't need to be throwing anything else in the landfill. And if you don't have it where you can poll or purge or give it to somebody, try selling it. Me, I personally prefer to give something away, but allow that thing to go on and be a blessing in someone else's life. It's really funny with my family because once we shuffle things around and you go over to 
to wherever the new house is for that particular item and you see it, you know, they'll come over and be like, uh-uh, I want my stuff back, but no, it's my turn. But that's what we do. And once you purge, maybe you'll have enough room to rearrange your furniture. So now that we've purged, we are at number four on the list. And y'all, that is organization. Woo! <laughs> Let's talk about this organization. So now that I have purged my closet, of course, I had to organize my closet. And y'all, it brings me so much joy to be able to walk into my closet and be able to find the things that I need to get dressed, stressless, and know what I have. But let me give you a flip side about this organization. And that is organization and social media. Mm. You might be saying, Southern girl, what you talking about? Organization and social media? Let me bring it on home. I feel that social media, Instagram and Pinterest, <coughs> depicts these perfect images of pantries, bedrooms. You know, it really, for me, when I go on there, don't get me wrong, I do enjoy looking at those pictures. Because I'm going to tell y'all, Pinterest made me do a lot of things. Pinterest made me do it. But I find lots of times that some of those images are so perfect that sometimes it'll paralyze you from doing anything because you see this perfect image and it's like, how do I achieve that look? And y'all, social media is a big influencer. And I'm saying this I'm on YouTube. What I've discovered for myself is... Even though I do see those beautiful images and I want to obtain a level of organization, I had to realize for myself, I don't live like that. Now, for the most part, I'm a pretty organized person on the surface. We'll talk about that. I'm a pretty organized person on the surface, but I'm not a perfect person and we don't live in a perfect world. And the other thing is the cost factor. Some of those containers, when you really start adding the things up to get to that point where your pantry looks like this, you can spend some money to try to maintain what you're seeing out there in social media. I'm getting ready to redo my pantry. I've been kind of working on it, but I'm going to do some real budget friendly items to redo a pantry. And, you know, hopefully you can tune back in and check that video out. But stage of organization that I am in my own home it's like I have some areas that are organized. I got some cabinets that are organized. Some are not. I have some drawers that are organized. Some are not. In this year of 2021, my goal is to get to a level of organization that works for me and works within my budget. Moving on to the last design tip that is no cost or low cost for better living. Okay, y'all, number five on the list. And I'm going to preference this by saying, don't be cussing and saying nothing ugly in the comments down below. Y'all, we need to clean up. Yeah, I said it. We need to clean our houses up. And don't be hiring somebody else to come and do the cleanup for you. You do it yourself. This is a good time to jump on in and get your house clean from top to bottom. I'm talking about cleaning the windows, doing the window seals, vacuuming. Matter of fact, getting up there dusting. And now that you're going to go get some new light bulbs, you're probably going to see more dust than you've ever seen before. Just like me. I changed some bulbs out and I was like, ooh, it's dusty up here. So we need to clean our house up. So let me give you a gauge if you're a pretty clean person. If it takes you 35, 45, 55 minutes to clean your house up, pretty much top to bottom, you good. But if it's gonna take you about three days to clean your house up, you outside the boundaries. You living outside the boundaries. Mm -mm, I, need, I need you to come on, I need you to come on back in. And if you have ever said to someone, excuse the mess, You knew I was coming over to your house. You knew they was coming over to your house. You passed the boundaries. You out there on the fringe somewhere. But in 2021, y'all, we can get it together. We can get it together. We can do We can do this. So I'm really trying to get my house in order for me. Because y'all, I need some vacuum lines in my life. My friends be laughing at me because I like to see the vacuum lines and carpets. That's my thing. It don't have to be your thing. I do have wood floors downstairs, but I have carpet upstairs. But I do. I like to see vacuum lines in my carpet. And I know sometimes, I know some people, you know, you're so busy in your life. You got things going on. But you know, you should take at least a few minutes a day at least to do a tidy up, clean up. You might need to sing a little baby clean up song. Clean up, clean up. Whatever is going to help you get your house clean 
everything to get in order in 2021 we need to clean our houses up that is a design tip for better living it is soothing to the spirit when you can walk into your home and it is free of clutter and distractions but y'all know i got a story for you right you know i got a story this story is about the lady called my mother so let me give you a little background about my mama my mother is a very neat clean and organized person she always has been when i was growing up she would cook and when we would come home from school she was home and she cooked dinner it was like it was magical it would be no dishes you would not even see the dishes where she prepared the food the food would be ready we would be ready for dinner and the kitchen would be cleaned up growing up my mother never allowed us to leave a pot a cup salsa fork spoon nothing in the sink when we were done and the kitchen was clean everything was put away and the sink was dried out and if you thought you was going to put a pot with some food into the refrigerator because it was leftovers, who, honey, that was blasphemy in my mama's house. She had leftover containers to put anything that, that would go into the refrigerator. Growing up, we had chores. Well, you know, in the South, we say chores. I don't know what other people say, but in the South, we say chores. But a chore is things that you do and you get paid an allowance for doing them. But see, I didn't get an allowance when I was growing up. No, I take that back. I did get an allowance. My allowance was food, it was room and board, and it was clothes on my back. That was my allowance for my chores that I did around the house. Wherever we were assigned to do our chores, we were assigned a week at a time. It was my week for the kitchen. And everything used from sweeping the floor, washing the dishes, and all the whole nine yards. So one night, I was on the phone, probably talking to some little boy, and I fell asleep. And it was the dishes left in the sink. About 3 a.m. in the morning, that lady called my mother, bust into my room, and told me, if I don't get my, I'm going to let y'all fill in the blanks, out that bed, it's going to be a problem. Now, I was saying to myself, it, it is, it's already a problem. It's 3 o'clock in the morning, you're waking me up. Did I go in there and wash those dishes? Of course I did. Did I struggle the next day at school? <laughs> Y'all know I did. Did I ever do that again while I lived in that lady called my mother's house? No. So the moral of this story is, if you have small children, teach them now to clean up and maintain a level of cleanliness in the house. Do I leave dishes in my sink to this day? No. Do I dry my sink out when I'm done with it? Of course I do. Do I put pots with food in my refrigerator? Heck no. Because that lady called my mother. The pot police, honey, she might show up at my house at any given time. So I don't even want food with the pot police like that. So clean up. We need to clean up. We can do it. We can do it. I got areas too. No, I mean, it's not just you. I still got areas in my house I need to deal with. We're not going to even talk about the garage. These are my five design tips that are no cost or low cost for better living. If you are new to my channel and you have watched this video up until this point, you might as well go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Of course, you are welcome to leave any questions or comments. If you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up. Make sure to click the notification bell and that'll let you know every time I upload a new video. And we can stay connected on Instagram as well as Facebook. To all my existing subscribers, you know I got nothing but love for you. Thank you so much for your time. And until the next video.